Hello everybody and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. My name is Aaron and today I'm going to be showing you exactly how I made my own Master Chief helmet. It feels like it's been a while since I've done a helmet tutorial video, but I'm very excited to show you guys this one. In this video we're going to cover the sanding, smoothing, and painting of this helmet, as well as a few other little features that go into it. Now the vacuum formed visor and all that deserves its own video, so I'm not going to be covering it in this one, but there will be another video outlining exactly how I do all that because honestly, it's a bit of a process. So let's get right into finishing this helmet, starting with the raw 3D print. So I've got the helmet printed in three pieces, the face, the back, and the top. And they're going to fit together later on down the road, but first I wanna start smoothing out those print lines a little bit. And the first product I'm gonna use is Bondo Glazing and Spot Putty. You're going to want to wear a respirator and gloves for this, because we're going to be spreading it around with our fingers. This stuff starts out with a toothpaste consistency, but after about five hours, it will harden, and then we'll be able to sand it, leaving the Bondo in the 3D print line, so what you're left with is a smooth surface. And we need that smooth surface before we start painting, otherwise you'll be able to see the 3D print lines and that doesn't look good. So I just squeeze a little bit out in all of the areas and then spread it around with my finger. You don't need a really thick layer of this stuff. In fact, you want to kind of avoid doing a thick layer because it's going to make sanding harder down the line. So you just want to do a nice thin coating of it all around the helmet. I also try a new technique in this video where I use a little square of EVA foam to kind of act like a sponge to spread out the Bondo. They worked okay, but I'll probably just use my fingers rather than cut out a new square of EVA foam all the time. Be sure not apply Bondo on the edges where the parts are going to connect. Same with those alignment tabs. We don't want to be adding any more material on those edges because we want the parts to fit as closely together as possible. Now this helmet was printed on a CR10 V2 in PLA. You can find a link to the files and the prints in the description below if you want to do this project yourself. Once we have a nice base coating of Bondo all over the helmet, we can begin sanding. Now for the first pass of sanding, I like to use a medium grit sandpaper, roughly around 120 grit. You're going to want to wear a respirator for this. And I also use a shop vac while I'm sanding to suck up a lot of the Bondo dust that all this sanding is gonna generate. That's why I've got my respirator on. You guys gotta be sure to protect yourselves because this stuff is quite nasty. The vacuum helps a lot to suck up a lot of the dust but you just want to be careful. That's why I'm not really keen on mixing Bondo with acetone and putting it through an airbrush or putting anything else through an airbrush that's not paint. It might help you shave a little bit of time off sanding, but in my opinion, it's not worth the risks to your health, even if you're making super cool stuff like this. Now, after we've sanded all the parts, this is just the first pass, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but we want to try and fill at least 80 to 90% of those 3D print lines before we move on. Now Bondo is great at filling in a lot of those 3D print lines, but it can't get everywhere. So we're gonna be using this high build filler primer to fill in a lot of the smaller print lines and the smaller scratches of the helmet for the rest of it. We've got the face here. I dust it off with some compressed air just to make sure that our surface is clean. And then I'll spray this filler primer across all the parts, generally doing about two to three coats, waiting 20 minutes between coats. And this is gonna do a great job at getting in spots where the Bondo can't reach because this is an aerosol spray. Now the helmet is not perfectly smooth yet. There's still some lines on the top you can see. So we'll repeat the Bondo and then the filler primer steps until the helmet is fully smooth and ready for painting. But first I wanted to assemble this because we might have to fill in some of the cracks between the parts. To glue it in, I'm gonna be using E6000. It's a very strong glue, but it needs around 24 hours to fully cure. So we're gonna be leaving this overnight. First, you want to join the top and the front parts together because then those two pieces will fit into the back piece. I apply a nice coating of E6000 on those alignment tabs, but also just the edge itself, and then push those parts together. And like I said, we're going to let it sit for around a day for that glue to finish curing, and then we can continue sanding and filling. After the glue is cured, like I said, I'm going to be using Bondo to fill the cracks between those pieces, as well as touch up any other spots that I missed the first time around. Then it's pretty simple. You just repeat the process, the sanding, the filler primer, until we are happy with the smoothness of our helmet. So sanding with 120 grit sandpaper is still pretty rough. Before we start painting, we want to wet sand this thing. With a 400 grit sandpaper, it's gonna make the helmet feel a lot smoother and the surface is gonna be much cleaner before we start painting. So I just run some cold water over the helmet while I sand away with a 400 grit sandpaper. After this, we let it dry and then we should be ready to start laying some paint colors down. Okay, you can see on the helmet I've been experimenting with a couple different greens for the helmet, but this is the one that I settled on, a Satin Eden. It's a little bit light in color going onto the helmet, but once we weather the helmet down with some blacks, 
it looks just perfect for the Halo Infinite Master Chief helmet. So this is the color that you're gonna need. Be sure and do light coats so that your paint doesn't run. I do all of this in around three total coats before it has a pretty nice and solid covering. So once we wait around 24 hours for those coats of paint to finish drying, we can start taping off areas to prepare for the black details of the helmet. Now this is a pretty time consuming process, but it is definitely worth it to get the taping right to make sure that the details are symmetrical and to ensure that your tape will protect your helmet from overspray of the black because it will be very noticeable if you do. I found this automotive detailing masking tape and it works great for something like this. It's stickier than normal masking tape, so you don't have to worry as much about your tape lifting off between the time from you taping it and actually painting it. But it's also thin like normal masking tape, so it's easy to work around curves and small detailed areas. The color is unfortunate because it closely matches the helmet color, but it's easy enough to distinguish from the helmet if you look close enough. I'm gonna be covering the rest of the helmet in a thicker masking tape, just so I don't have to use as much and I can lay it down quicker. But once that's done, we will be ready to paint the black details on the helmet. For the black, we're just gonna go with an ultra matte black. Nothing too special, but make sure that your tape is fully secured to the helmet before you start painting so you can prevent black from getting anywhere you don't want it to. Just like the green, do it in light coats so that your paint doesn't run and give it around a full 24 hours to fully dry. Once the paint is dried, we'll need to very carefully peel off all this tape. A downside of that green masking tape being stickier than normal is that it could also peel up some of your paint if you're not careful. It actually happened to me a little bit on the dome. I had to do some touching up later. So just take your time. Be very gentle in peeling off that tape. It is very sticky. So now that the paint job is mostly done, there's still a few little things I want to touch up with the paintbrush. We can start weathering. And the first weathering step I want to do is add some silver scuff marks around the helmet and make it look like the helmet's been damaged a bit. If you look in Halo Infinite, his helmet is actually very damaged. I didn't want to go too far with it, but I definitely wanted to add some silver scuffs to some of the hard corners and hard edges of the helmet to give it a more lived in look. To do that, all I need is a small sponge brush and some metallic silver spray paint. I'm gonna spray the paint on the sponge brush and then very gently brush it across portions of the helmet. I'm gonna kinda do it all over the helmet, but I am gonna pay special attention to the hard corners and the edges of the helmet. The very front of the visor, for example, that is a very pointed and hard spot. Those kind of spots are what is most likely to have its paint rubbed off or scratched off in some way. So we're gonna try and replicate that with this. I wanna do this before I do any type of black wash to the helmet because this silver is going to imply heavy damage to the helmet so much that it scrapes some paint off. But whereas a black wash is more intended to just add some kind of dirt and grime to the helmet and make it look kind of more lived in. And we want that dirt and grime on top of the silver paint that we're applying now. As always, you can definitely overdo weathering, so keep that in mind while you're moving forward. Every spot doesn't need to be weathered this way. And just remember, it's a lot harder to cover up this weathering than it is to just not do it in the first place. Once that is complete, now we can move on to our black wash using some black acrylic paint, watering it down a little bit, and then using a sponge brush to brush that watery mixture over the helmet and quickly wiping it up with a paper towel afterwards. You don't wanna clean up all of the black paint. You want some of it to be left in the hard creases of the helmet. That is what is going to give the impression of dirt and grime collecting in those spots that don't get cleaned as often. The beauty of this technique is its simplicity. If you feel like your wash is a little bit too dark, you can just add some more water. Whereas if you feel like it's still too light and not doing anything, you could add some more paint or just have a higher paint to water ratio if you want to mix it up again. Now the danger of this technique is having like a runaway streak of paint run down the helmet. It is a very watery mixture. It will run if you tilt the helmet some way or another. And if that happens, you will need to clean it up right away. Otherwise it will leave a long streak of black paint down the helmet. It looks not great at all. So keep an eye out for those. And if you need to clean it off, use some water or use some rubbing alcohol to clean off the streak and then weather it again. This is also going to greatly help in toning down the bright green of the paint. And after this, I feel like the helmet, it just looks the perfect shade of green for Master Chief in Halo Infinite. They really like to change the green around between episodes or between games, but I was really happy with the color choice for this one for Halo Infinite. Just like the silver, you can overdo it in this step. If that does happen, Try washing it off quickly with some water or, like I said earlier, use a paper towel, some gloves, 
and use some denatured alcohol to clean off the acrylic paint. Okay, now that the helmet is fully painted, we can add that visor to it to really make it look like Master Chief. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, making that visor is a pretty complex process. So I feel like it deserves its own video, but I am going to be using some steel stick epoxy putty to hold it in place in the helmet. Now, this was a little difficult to film, but steel stick epoxy putty, you clip off a little bit, rub it together, like make Play-Doh snakes, and it will change color and very quickly harden. So we're going to mix it together and then stick it in some corners of the visor to hold it in place, and stick it to the inside of the 3D print. It sticks pretty well inside the grooves of the print lines and it is very fast acting. So take this in small chunks, do your best to center and align the visor first, and then start adding in more putty just for security and stability. You can kind of see the approach that I took, putting some putty in the four corners and then directly in the middle underneath the visor. This stuff works pretty well for holding the visor in, but make sure that you wear gloves because it will stain your hands otherwise. Okay, now we get to do something pretty cool. I'm gonna be adding the four little flashlight bulbs that go on the side of the Master Chief helmet. I got this kit from Imperial Tech Shop, so big thank you to him. It is a button press that turns on the lights. So pretty simple setup, but we're just gonna be installing it inside the helmet with some hot glue for now, and then reinforcing it later on down the road. Just kind of push the light bulbs through the little holes on the side, then hot glue them in, and then same for some of the other circuitry in the button. This was a really fun addition to the helmet. I've never done a helmet with lights before, so this was a nice, fun little thing to do. And I think they make such a fun little addition to the helmet and just makes it that much cooler. So there you go guys, that is how I made my own Master Chief helmet and how you can do it too. Be sure and check out the links in the description for all the materials used, a list of all the links and everything else you'll need if you wanna do this project yourself. I had a lot of fun working on this project, but now it's time to go back to working on the life-size Master Chief. So I'll get to do another helmet just like this one, albeit with a little bit of a different approach. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you again in the next one.